We continue on our journey exploring the northernmost part of Japan. In our last video, we explored the beautiful city of Aomori for one night before heading off to Hakodate, Hokkaido's third largest city. Nestled at the southern edge of the island, Hakodate is renowned for its stunning vistas from Mount Hakodate and its delectable, locally sourced seafood. In this video, we'll take you on a journey of the key attractions that Hakodate has to offer. Standing at an elevation of 334 meters, our first stop in our journey is Mount Hakodate. Covered in lush woodlands and situated at the southern tip of the peninsula where central Hakodate predominantly lies, the panoramic views of the mountain, especially on clear days and nights, are breathtaking and are esteemed as one of Japan's top three nightscapes. At the summit, accessible by ropeway, bus or car, you can enjoy complimentary observation platforms, browse through souvenir shops and relax at a cafe or restaurant. The ropeway fare is 1800 yen for a round trip or 1200 yen for a one-way journey, operating every 15 minutes. Alternatively, for the adventurous souls, you can opt to hike up the mountain and savor the rewarding views of the city, just like we did. Starting from our Airbnb, we made our way through the quiet streets to Cape Tachimachi. Standing at the edge of the sea with the sea salt whipping our faces, the wind was so strong that if we had a parachute, we could have caught the drive up to the top of the mountain. Alas, we decided to walk by foot and boy was it worth it. Story time! I may have alluded in the last video we had a very unfortunate mishap in one of the local parks in Hakodate so it was actually while we were hiking up or making our way to start the hike up to Mount Hakodate we decided that we wanted to have a quick pit stop and go to the bathroom and most places in rural areas of Japan have the drop toilet so both myself and Rachel went in and I heard Rachel scream out and I thought I thought it was a snake or something and then she's like oh my god I dropped my phone so it turned out her phone was in her back pocket of her jeans and when she tried to pull her pants back up it pushed out and slipped out of the back pocket and went straight into the drop toilet not just like on the bit of porcelain that's just kind of there it went in the actual hole so it kind of goes like this down like an S shape and then down straight into the sewer. So we didn't really know what to do. Thankfully, we actually saw these locals walking by. It started off with one lady who was just kind of picking up some trash in the area with my broken Japanese that wasn't that good. I conveyed the message that we knew needed some help. So she disappeared for several minutes and then came back with about three, four men. And they were obviously like council workers. So they had some tools and things and they just got to work straight away. Lots of flushing of the toilet. There's like the little manhole that's just outside of the toilet area. So they opened that up. They couldn't see anything, more flushing. Then I hear them talking amongst themselves and one guy just runs off and he's gone. So the guys are still working. And then before you know it, the guy comes back, he's got sticks, 
poles, a whole bunch of long contraptions, and he's he's basically got everything. So he comes back and they start shoving things <laughs> down the toilet, more flushing, shoving paper in there, more flushing. Some guys outside looking at things going past in the manhole without much luck, then the boss turns up so he rocks up and he's does a little skid in his little white van and he comes over now there's like five guys working on retrieving the phone out of the drop toilet and there's a couple of people were accompanied by you know a dog multiple stray cats and then some guy comes around and starts giving us some gum and it, it was just such a random situation to be in but while we were waiting because you know there wasn't much we could do otherwise we'd just probably get in their way so we're just kind of waiting and then i start interviewing like we're in a news channel so <laughs> I, as um i was standing right beside that white woman yep uh, i heard screams i thought she saw a snake or yeah. a massive huntsman yeah and then i realized she was a fuckwit and she just dropped the phone. <laughs> so yeah, as Rachel said, uh, we'll report back to you. Thank you. All right, now we're just going to interview the victim here. Do you have any yeah. any initial thoughts on how the rescue project is going? Well, it sounds like um, they may have it. Yeah, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I, I believe they will. And we just have a witness on the scene here as well. So, can you tell me what's happened um, thus far since you came on the scene? Of well, it was about 4.30. I mm was -hmm. just walking across the park. It was a beautiful day. I'm mm -hmm. going to go for a hike. And I came across this toilet and I heard a scream. And I ran to that scream and, you know, whoever was there, I was going to give their aid. But And then, thankfully, as I was interviewing the witness of the situation, we hear this, yes, we got it! Her phone had just dropped down into the drop box. Oh, I couldn't no. believe it. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and they actually got it. They got the phone out. It was unreal. I think we were all just kind of blown away because thinking back in Australia, you might not get that sort of like rush to help strangers. It would just be kind of like an apathetic, ah, oh, well, you're not going to get that back, are you? So the response from them was just amazing. They didn't ask for anything in return. So as soon as they gave the phone back, they all just kind of walked off like it was just a normal thing that happened and we were just so thankful so I don't know it was it was a really cool experience it was hilarious and after just letting it sit for a little bit the phone still worked for the rest of the trip so it was completely random but a favorable outcome for everyone and it really just lifted my spirits and restored my faith in humanity but Back to the video. Welcome to Fort Goryokaku, a remarkable star-shaped citadel built during the late years of the Edo period to safeguard Hakodate against Western powers' imperialist threats. It later became a battleground during a civil war between the shogunate army and the superior troops of the newly formed Meiji government. As its military significance waned, the fort evolved into a public park in the 1910s, adorned with over a thousand cherry trees along its moats, making it a premier cherry blossom destination in Hokkaido. The peak bloom typically graces the park in early May, so unfortunately we were just a month or so too early to witness the full bloom in the Star Park, but I imagine it would be absolutely stunning. At the heart of the fort lies the former magistrate office, once the administrative hub for the shogunate over Hokkaido. Although the original building succumbed after the shogunate's fall in 1871, the city painstakingly reconstructed a portion of the complex, unveiling it to the public in 2010. For a panoramic view of this grand fortress, ascend to the observation deck of the nearby Goryo Kaku Tower. Standing at 107 meters tall, this tower replaced its 60 meter predecessor in 2006, offering visitors an unparalleled perspective of the historic site. If you don't have a rental car, just jump on the tram for 15 minutes from Hakodate Station to Goryo Kaku Koemae. Then it's about a 10 minute walk on foot to the fort. Next stop on our Hakodate tour is Motomachi. 
At the foot of Mount Hakodate, this district became favoured among the new foreign tourists after the harbour of Hakodate opened to foreign trade in 1854. Many traders from China, Russia and Western countries moved to Hakodate, resulting in many foreign-looking buildings, churches and government buildings remaining on display. Another popular site in the Motomachi area are the 19 sloped streets offering a beautiful view of the port. Perfect opportunity for all you photographers out there. The the Motomachi district is easily accessible from Hakodate Station, just a quick 5 minute tram ride or a leisurely 20 to 30 minute stroll away. Located in the picturesque Bay Area, remnants of Hakodate's rich trading history stand tall in the form of several well-preserved red brick warehouses. These architectural gems have been transformed into a vibrant destination, offering a blend of shopping, dining and entertainment experiences. Located just a short distance away, the red brick warehouses are easily accessible. You can reach them with a leisurely 15 to 20 minute stroll from Hakodate Station or a quick 5 minute walk from the Jujiga by tram stop. Join us next time as we take our rental car on a road trip to the outer suburbs of Hakodate and hike up Mount Essen, or if you're looking on Google Maps, it's just called Mount E, an active volcano about 618 meters above sea level. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel if you're new, and ring that notification bell so you won't miss any of our future adventures. Until next time, keep exploring and stay curious. I'll see you on the next adventure.